Do you sometimes sit at home staring at your computer screen wondering what your lesson plan is all about? Do you sometimes feel that your lesson plan doesn't always translate well to the classroom? If so, then this is the episode for you because I'm going to be introducing you to some questions that you should be asking yourself as a teacher in order to fine tune your lesson planning. teaching and yes today I'm going to be introducing you to some questions that you can ask yourself as a teacher when preparing for a lesson. I'm talking about planning but I'm not necessarily talking about the paperwork that is involved in preparing for a lesson uh, before you teach it. In whatever way as a teacher and as a school you prepare for your lessons it's always important to make sure that our, pre our preparations are accurate and focused on the learning in hand. So I've got a few questions that you can ask yourself as a teacher to ensure that your planning, whatever way that is done, is fine-tuned and ready to allow you as a teacher to deliver a lesson in a really clear and focused way. Okay, the first question that you need to ask yourself as a teacher is what do I want the children to learn? The learning focus, the learning objective, whatever you want to call it, the question that needs to be asked is what do I want my children to learn during this lesson? You need to be able to answer that question first before anything else. Otherwise, lessons can lack focus, the children don't quite know what they're learning, you don't quite know what they're learning, and it gets a bit wishy-washy. So it's really important to be able to answer that question as a teacher so that the children can answer that question in the classroom and they have a clear focus on what they're trying to achieve. The next question you want to ask yourself is how are the children going to show that they understand? So once you've got the learning focus, you're thinking about the outcome now of the lesson. How do you want the children to show that they understand? Is it by producing a piece of writing? Is it by answering questions? Is it by doing a practical activity? What do you want to be able to see the children doing in order for them to show you that they understand what they have just learned? Once you've got plan the activities and once you've got your learn objective, it's just really important to ask these, do my activities match my learning focus? So the first two questions is what are the children going to learn and how are they going to show it? You need to make sure this, do my activities match up with those two things? So am I asking the children to do something that is going to allow them to de demonstrate their understanding? If the answer is yes, then great, you're good to go ahead. If the answer is no, then you might want to tweak your activities to make sure that children have a really good chance to show you what they have learned. And of course, when it comes down to differentiation, it's really important that that question is really easily answered. If the activity doesn't match what you want that child to be able to do by the end of a lesson, then you've not differentiated properly for them. If you want a child to learn one specific thing and the activity doesn't match that, then you've not personalized the learning for them. So it's really important whatever activities and whatever uh, tasks you want the children to complete are really clearly matched to what learning you want to take place for each individual student. So the next side, after you've planned the lesson and you've, got, uh, and you've got your activities and you've got your lesson set up, the next part of your planning is all about assessments. Because for you as a teacher, it's really understand that yes, the children are showing you what they've learned, but you need to be able to assess that of how well they've learned it. The next question that you need to ask yourself is what am I going to assess? What are you going to look for in the children's work, in the children's activities that will show and provide evidence for you that they understand what they have just learned? And that links to success criteria. If you are very clear on what you want to see the children doing during the activity that links to their learning, then you're able to know exactly what you are assessing. And if it's clear to the children, it's clear to you as well. So the next part of it is when will you assess it? Are you going to assess it during the lesson? Are you going to assess it at the end of a lesson? Are you going to take all the work in? Because you're not going to be able to assess all the children at the same time. So it might be that you move around and you're going to focus on different groups of learners. It might be that this group, you're going to mark their work at the end of a lesson. It might be this work, you're going to sit and do guided work and ask questions in order to assess those children. It might be that you move around. It might be that you have peer assessment going on, but it's really important to be able to identify when that you are going to assess the children. And if the answer is always at the end of a lesson through marking, you're probably going to give yourself a bit too much to do at home after school, which isn't going to be good for your well-being. So try and find opportunities during the whole lesson to assess the children's understanding at different points. 
So there's two more questions before you have a fully formed plan. The next one is how will you assess? So you've identified what you're going to assess, you've identified when you're going to assess it, but it's really important of how you're going to do that. Is it the questions that you're going to ask that's going to allow you to assess the children? Is it going to be the problems that you've presented to the children in the activity? Is it going to be observational? Is it going to be group and uh, through discussion? There's lots of different ways of assessing pupils, but also each pupil may need assessing in different ways. For example, if you have an English language learner in mathematics, they might not be able to communicate verbally their understanding, but might be able to show you through uh, materials and objects that they can uh, manipulate, or indeed by the questions that they answer. And likewise, a really gifted and talented student might not just need questions to answer, but they might have to explain and justify and really um, give some detailed answers to allow you to assess them properly. And the final question is who will assess? So identify, is it you that's going to assess the pupils? Uh, is your teaching assistant going to assess the pupils? Are the pupils going to assess each other? How are you going to support yourself in assessing other pupils? Because if you have a class of 30, it's going to be impossible to assess the pupils every single day just from you. So try and allow other people to get involved, particularly the other pupils. The better they get at assessing themselves and checking through their work, the less work that you have to do. So those are some simple questions that you can ask yourself to make sure that your lesson plans are finely tuned to make sure they're learning focused and they provide opportunities for you to assess and understand how well the children have learned. It's all about making sure that you have a clear learning objective and a learning focus for the students. You know exactly how a children are going to demonstrate that learning and really how you're going to assess because that's really key in allowing you to plan future lessons. If you don't know what your children have understood in the lesson and what they need to work on more in the lesson, the next lesson isn't going to be tailor-made for those students because you're not going to know where each child is at. Hopefully these questions have been really useful. My name is Ben from Wagon Teaching. Please make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel or you follow and subscribe to our podcast episodes. I hope you've really enjoyed this episode all about questions to ask yourself when you're planning and preparing for lessons. If you have any extra ideas, then please comment in the comment boxes below on YouTube or indeed on our social media channels. I'd be happy to add some extras to the next video that I create. Once again, thank you for watching or listening. Have a really great day.